Hey there, this is Mr. Bean from FlipMath.com, and today we're going to look at the second part in our video series, second of three parts, on how to calculate any day of the week with a mental calendar, doing it all in your head. Now, do you know what day of the week you were born? If you told me your birthday, I could usually, within about five seconds, sometimes a little longer, I could usually calculate in my head what day of the week that was, what Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you the very first steps on how to do this, so that when you're with your family and friends, you can look like a genius. Now it only works, this little mental trick only works for days October 15th, 1582, and on. If you're not sure why that is the case, you gotta go back and watch video number one in this series on the history of the calendar. But so what I'm talking about, this little trick only works from that day forward. So today we're gonna focus only on the month and day values. And then in the last part, part three, I'll teach you how to deal with the century and year values. It's just too much to confine it all into one lesson and it's a little bit overwhelming. So how do you know if you're gonna be able to do this? Here's the skills you've gotta be able to do, these math skills. You have to memorize a special month value, okay? 12 months, memorize 12 special values. We'll I'll talk about that in this lesson. You've gotta be able to add up several numbers. That's this lesson and next lesson, that's easy. You've gotta know if a year is a leap year or not. I'm gonna remind you that, but that's from part one on the history of the calendar, whether or not a year is a leap year. Some of you are thinking, well, it's just every four years. Actually, it's not. It's usually every four years, but sometimes it's not. Can you divide by seven and know the remainder? That's this lesson. You gotta be able to divide by seven, know the remainder, and then can you divide by four? That's the next lesson. And then subtract multiples of 28. If you have a number, can you subtract multiples of 28 from it? And then that's it. If you can do those things, you can do this calculation. So what we're gonna be doing is adding a bunch of numbers, we divide by seven, and then we're gonna focus in on the remainder. The remainder will tell you the day of the week. So if the remainder is a zero, it's a Sunday. If the remainder is a six, it's a Saturday. Again, the remainder after dividing by seven, I'll come back to this. So first off is the month values. The month, every month has a special value. So here they are. Don't stress about memorizing these yet. I'm gonna give you a little bit of some hints to help you memorize them. But one interesting thing is notice the first two months. If it is a leap year, we have to subtract one from January and February. So let me go back. Here's the normal values. January is a zero, February is a three. But if it's a leap year, then the January is a negative one and February is a two. So you have to know whether you're dealing with a leap year or not in order to do this correctly. How do you know if it's a leap year? Well, leap years are every four years. We do this if it's divisible by four. We've been doing this your whole life when it's a leap year, except for century years. Century years are not leap years unless that is divisible by 400. So now this is just a reminder for those of you who watched the first video in this series. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm not gonna explain this right here. You might have to go back and watch that video. All right, I got some memorization techniques. We're gonna, I'm gonna help you memorize these month values. Uh, we're gonna do some association as opposed to just straight memorization. It makes it a little easier. So January. January is the starting point of the year. It's the very first month. What is the lowest possible value of all the numbers we're gonna work with? Zero. Okay, January is the beginning and we're gonna start at zero. March, now I skipped February, I'll come back to February. March is the third month. That's a three. Easy. February, now February is the shortest month of the year. It kind of feels like a little weakling and they're just kind of scared. And so they tag along with their buddy March. They're friends with March and they just tag along and they have the same number. So March is a three because it's the third month. February is just kind of small and lonely and it just follows around March as a three. So now let's review this. January, what was January? Zero. What's February? Well, March was a three and February likes March. So it's also a three. March is the third month, it's a three. Now what if it's a leap year? If it's a leap year, then January is a negative one. In February, if it's a leap year, it is a two. Okay, moving on. We got those first three months down. Now we go to April, and I gotta admit, April and November, I don't have good things for to help you remember. Okay, this is pretty weak. I remember April because April 6th is a somebody's birthday I know. Obviously that doesn't work for any of you, unless you happen to know somebody whose birthday is April 6th. So if you have a good idea of how to remember April as a six, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Uh, so I kind of just wrote six as a P there, but even though that's like, a, that's a stretch, but I visualized that and then that helps me out as well. All right, May. May Day is a holiday. I don't know if you've heard of May Day or not. Do you know what day of the month that is? May 1st. So when I hear May, I think May Day, May Day. May 1st is a holiday. June and July. Now this would be nice. June is the sixth month, but six goes with July. 
July 4th, that's a holiday, but four goes with June. And so that's what I'm saying here is if I switch June and July. the ones that would make most sense. June actually has a month value of four and July has a month value of six. Wouldn't it be nice if it was the other way around, right? June was six and July was four, but ah, bummer, it's not. We have to switch it and go the other way. All right, let's review now. Okay, I'm gonna, I put the month up here and you as quickly as possible say the month, month value. So March, third month, three. Okay, next one. April. April's the memorized one. Six. January. First month, zero. July. Oh, that's that June and July one. It would be like June. June's a six, so it's a six. February. That tags along with March, so three. June. Uh, it's that June and July thing again, so it's June is going to be a four. Okay, let's keep going. So now we're to August. August. How many U's are in August? How many U's? It's kind of a weird month spelling. Two U's. August is a two. September. I like this one. September starts with an S. The S looks like a five. You could write that S kind of like a five. September. So I remember September has that five at the beginning. October is the exact same thing. The number at the beginning is the month value. October. Zero. October. November. I don't have one for November, okay? So every year when my students, I'll be like, oh, I don't have one for November. And I, one year I had a student raise their hand and say, oh, Mr. Bean, I got it. And then they clap their hands. November. It has three syllables, Mr. Bean. <laughs> okay. So that has stuck out in my mind for years because I thought it was so funny because I didn't want to ruin it for this kid. <laughs> but there's a lot of months that have three syllables, but for whatever reason, that has just made it work for me. So November has three syllables. And then the last one, December. That's the time where you have Christmas season going on there. Great Christmas song. Five golden rings. So there we go. December is a five. When you see December, think Christmas time. And you got to think of that cool song, five golden rings. All the month values down now, right? You got it totally memorized. Like, let's just do some quick practice as a review. So I'll say the month and you say it out loud or just kind of under your breath. April, six. August. Two U's, two. December, five golden rings. Yes, five. October starts with a zero. March, that's the third month, three. July, oh, it's that June and July thing. Um, June would be the cool one, so that's a six. September starts with a five. January, it's the lowest month, zero. May, May Day, May Day, that's May 1st. February, friends with March, three. November, three syllables, three, and then June, oh, this is like the J July thing, so that's the four. All right, there we go. So that's just kind of good practice that you wanna remind yourself how to do those. If you can't, if you don't have these special numbers memorized, you will not be able to do this. And now we go on from the month values, let's do the date values. This is the easiest thing in this whole process. If the day's the 15th of the month, then you just add 15. If the day's the eighth of the month, you just add eight. It's whatever the date value is, super easy. Now there is century and year values. We will do this in the next video. We're not gonna worry about it in this lesson. We'll do it in part three. So for this lesson, I'm going to have you focus in on the year 2010. And I'm telling you that the century and year value give you a combined value of four. You do not know have to know how to do that yet. I'm gonna teach you that in the next lesson. So let's just, all the dates we're gonna focus in on the year 2010, and I'm giving you the century and year values of four. So just recognize that from here on out. I just thought it was good practice for you to always be thinking about the century and year value, which in this case we'll say is a four. All right, so what you do then is you add, take the month value, the day value, the century value, and the year value, add them all up, divide by seven. And we only care about the remainder. We do not care how many times seven goes in. We care about what's left over, the remainder. And then with your remainder, that's where we get this. We get the day of the week based on whatever the remainder is. All right, so let's do it. Here we go, practicing. What day of the week was April 12th, 2010? So here's how we set it up. This is what you're trying to do in your head. You're adding these four things together. So you take the month, April. What is April? Six. Then you take the day. Well, this is 12, that's easy, 12. And then the century and year, you haven't learned how to do yet, so I gave it to you. Combined, it's gonna be a four for this. So add those numbers together and we get 22. Now divide by seven and remember you only care about the remainder. Yes, seven goes into 22 three times, but we don't care about the number three. We care about the remainder only. If the remainder is a one, then April 12th, 2010 was a Monday because the remainder of one is a Monday. 
So there we go. And there's the calendar for proof. I looked on Google real quick. April 2010, the 12th day was a Monday. Now let's do another one. January 1st. So when was New Year's in 2010? So we take the month. January is the smallest possible number, zero. The day is a one. Century and year value I gave you was a four. Add those numbers up, we get a five. Divide by seven, and what's the remainder? The remainder is five. So therefore, what day is that? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday. So January 1st was on a Friday. All right, one more of these, and then I'm gonna show you some little shortcuts. What day of the week was October 31st, 2010? So we do the month, day, century, year. What's the month for October? Zero. The day th is a 31. Century and year combined to a four. Add all those together, we get a 35. Divide 35 by seven, and what do you get? We don't care what you get, we care about the remainder. The remainder is nothing. So if the remainder is nothing, that is a Sunday. So there it is, October 31st, Halloween in 2010 was on a Sunday. So I've given you how to do the months and the dates values, but I want to show you what I'm doing in my head to speed things up because it's all about how fast can you calculate this. If it takes you a long time, it's not quite as impressive. So it just this just takes a lot of practice. Because we're dividing by seven, the remainder is our goal. So you can actually do things that help reduce the number as you're working. For example, what day of the week was August 21st, 2010? Well, when I work through this, the month of August is two because of two U's. The day, I'm going to count the day as a zero. Notice that. The day is a 21, but I'm counting it as a zero. Why? Because 21 is divisible by seven. If it's ever divisible by seven, I can just cancel it out because eventually I'm trying to get the remainder anyway. Okay, hopefully you understand what I'm talking about here. So numbers that are divisible by seven, just boom, they go down to zero. Okay, so that will speed up the process here. And then what was the century and year? A four. So now look, the numbers are much smaller. You just get two and four is six. Six divided by seven is, gives you a remainder of six, and therefore that was on a Saturday. Okay, let's do another one of those. November 15th. So November, three syllables. November's a three. Now the day 15, I'm not gonna think of 15 as 15. I'm gonna think of it as the number one. Why? Because 15 is one more than 14. 14 is divisible by seven. And so it would have a remainder of one. 15 has a remainder of one. So you can always just reduce down to the remainder. All right, so then I have the century and year of four for 2010. Combine all those together, you get eight. Divide by seven and the remainder is a one. So yes, I could have used a 15 right here instead of a one, but it would still give me exactly the same number, which would be the date on a Monday. Okay, last little shortcut. And that is when you can have a month day combo that can reduce. So we'll take a look at this. June is a four. It's that June, July thing. So June's a four. And then we have a day of three. So when I see four and three combined, I actually delete it from my memory. Four and three is a seven and seven is divisible by seven. Therefore, boop, it's just gone. And then all I focus in is the year and the century value. So we get four divided by seven has a remainder of four. So that was on a Thursday. So these are just little tricks that speed things up. So take a look. These are all month, uh, month and day combos that totally cancel out. If you think about the month value plus the date value, those would be a number divisible by seven. January is a zero and 28th. Take a look at this, uh, this one here, March. March is a three plus 18 is 21. That total is a 21, it cancels out. So those are little tricks that I'm doing in my head to speed this up. Every single one of these dates would just become a zero if you had that month and day combination. So just something to keep in mind as you're practicing this that can speed it up for you. All right, so that was it. If you look down in the video description, you should see a link where I've got some practice worksheets on our website. You can click those, those are free. You can download them, practice it, check your answers, see how you're doing on this. And you really wanna try and do this as much as you can in your head if possible, because that's the more impressive thing. If you have to get some paper out and practice just to get used to it, that's fine, but you don't wanna have to do that in front of people. It's not nearly as impressive. So good luck on this. I will see you back in our next lesson where we'll add in the century and year values. This is Mr. Bean signing off.